Hello! Today you're going to be talking to my shadow. Just kidding. Poor little diagonal today. Uh, my camera is balanced on a tree. Do tutorials on skin tones. Please make a video about skin tones. Literally, that is the number one thing that you guys ask me how to paint. And I'm just over here like, how do you explain how to paint skin tones? This isn't even a tutorial, okay? This is kind of like my personal approach and my simplified understanding. There's paint on my arm. By no means is this the way that you should paint skin tone. There's so many different skin colors out there. There's so many different lighting possibilities. It's gonna look different every single time. Your palette will be different. I hope you guys find this a little bit helpful. I would honestly not make this video if it wasn't so requested. All right, so let's begin. <laughs> Now the thing with skin tones is that there are so many different possibilities and when creating realistic flesh tones, it's important to note that human skin has a very slight transparency to it. Hence, we can see our veins. I know they're not as visible to some people, but mine are super visible. Kind of freaks me out sometimes. In terms of painting, you're not really painting skin. You're painting the light that's being reflected off the skin. And because of the transparency, in different lighting, it will reflect different colors. For example, areas in the body where the bone is closer to the skin, it will have less warm colors and closer to the blues and greens, especially in the shadows. Transitions from dark shadows to light will have slight hints of red. For painting dark skin tones, you will simply use less white and more burnt umber, and you will still need to add various amounts of blues, greens, and purples to create a lifelike tone. What you're looking at is a quick study that I'm painting as one example. The colors that I used most for this portrait were flake white, and it doesn't have to be flake white, you can use whatever white you prefer, flake white is just my personal preference for now, burnt sienna, raw umber, yellow ochre, and flesh tint. To thin the paint and make it more manageable to work with, I'm using odorless mineral spirits. So I'm starting out by mixing white with a bit of burnt sienna and some yellow ochre to replicate the color that I thought was dominating the majority of the face. If it's not accurate, I know I can just blend other colors in to fix it. This is sort of the foundation which I'm building upon. I'm gradually blending in a little bit of white to where I think the highlights on the face should be. And again, I'm kind of estimating here, but the color I'm creating is for the shadows of the face. So I'm mixing in a little bit of yellow ochre, green, a little bit of white, and then I added some burnt sienna to it. And it's basically for the shadows on things like the nose bridge, the brow bones, the jawline. Um, the bonier areas tend to have a little bit more green tints in them. In this case, the tones are a little bit exaggerated for this portrait, but you get the idea. I'm gradually building the tones on the face and filling in the details and I brought in that flesh tint which is like a peach rosy color that I'm using for the softer parts of the face. Also keep in mind this isn't really a specific technique that I use, it's just sort of like I look at what I'm doing and think I think this should go here now and just build upon it that way. Um, I tend to start with the eyes most of the time but for this case I just did the face first. As I'm building the colors and layers, I'm using burnt umber with very slight green tints and burnt sienna for darker shadows like underneath the nose and jawbone. Also, sorry for my hair being crazy and flying around everywhere. I was painting outside and it was really windy, so yeah, sorry. Basically, I'm just continuously building the colors and layers, sometimes going over the ones I previously made because I discovered that I need to change them. That's perfectly fine. Sometimes I also wait for the layers to dry so that I could just lay down the colors and smooth them out on a dry surface without creating a crap color. <laughs> I just gradually build the colors and layers, and the further into the painting I get, the more I see things I need to fix or change, whatever, it all comes together gradually. And my technique is random, perhaps non-existent. I do every painting differently. In fact, I like to exaggerate the skin tones a lot and use vivid purples and blues because it's just fun to see those colors where they shouldn't be. 
And like I said, I'm not a teacher and I'm constantly learning, but this video is so highly requested and I hope that if you're starting out, it was at least a little bit helpful and I encourage you to do things differently. Find out what methods and materials work best for you. So thank you for watching guys. I will see you next week. Bye.